I'm Lisa Campbell, director of the Barry Center for the Arts at Ramapo College of New Jersey. Welcome to another edition of Bringing Home Barry. Today, we bring you the final video in our three-part series looking at the Ramapo College Rockama Center for International Education. In this video, Rockama Center staff members speak with international students who chose the United States and Ramapo College as their destination for higher education. They discuss both the challenges and rewards of studying abroad, how COVID has impacted their lives and future plans based on how the experience has changed them. Hello everybody, my name is Rajesh Adhikari. I'm the Associate Director of International Student and Scholar Services, as well as a Primary Designated School Officer for Ramapo College of New Jersey. Hi, my name is Izumi Osamenovic. I'm a program assistant at the Rakimo Center for International Education. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Erzin Bastola. I'm from Nepal and I graduated in 2017 as a computer science major. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Luka Marianovic. Uh, I'm a junior theater major with a concentration in acting and a minor in creative writing. I come from Bosnia and Herzegovina, but I have a dual citizenship with Croatia as well and I will be graduating in May of 2022. Hi everyone, I'm Natalie Khujoa. My major is marketing and I'm from a country, Georgia, and I will be graduating in May 2023. My name is Sing Sandiao and I'm from Burma. I graduated with a major in business administration with a concentration in finance back in 2019, and currently I'm attending MBA program at Ramapo. My name is Dorina Georgieva. I'm originally from Bulgaria. Um, at Ramapo, I majored in international studies and um, I minored in East Asian studies. I graduated in 2011, so it will be exactly 10 years this May. Why did you choose to come to Ramapo and what's your favorite thing about Ramapo? So I wanted to be nearby New York City. I applied to all the colleges uh, in 50 miles you know, radius from uh, New York City. Uh, and while doing that, I also found more things about Ramapo, like their scholarship opportunities, uh, as well as, you know, very strong computer science program. Uh, I was doing more research and uh, North Jersey was one of the safest place to live in, not only in New Jersey, but in the United States. So I wanted to be somewhere safe, you know, a school that provides tons of scholarships and nearby New York City. One of the biggest reasons why I chose Ramapo was I was looking into schools that were nearby uh, my family in New Jersey because I moved uh, in with my aunt and uncle. Um, also, while exploring more, you know, during the application process and the post application process, we had those interviews with the honors program. Uh, the scholarship opportunities uh, were great. And the theater program is this tight knit community uh, that uh, keeps putting out uh, different creative uh, projects and products consistently. And once I really delved into that and saw how how good of a relationship the faculty had with the students in the creative uh, aspects, I was uh, extremely interested in that. I'm a, a commuter international student, and that ties directly kind of in uh, my favorite part about Ramapo College, which is a small campus, but um, it has uh, tons of activities constantly. There's things to do uh, extracurricularly, curricularly, uh, both on weekdays, but on weekends. So I would say that feeling of a tight-knit community that's very welcoming is definitely my favorite part about studying here. I knew I wanted to go to a university that would give me an American experience and would be close to a major city, in Rampo's case, New York City, which is the best option out there. And my favorite thing about Ramapo is its size, which is also one of the reasons why I chose this college. I love being able to contact with professors on a personal level and be engaged in more of a discussion-based classes rather than listening to professors do three-hour lectures. Another thing that I really enjoy about Ramapo is the extra credit classes that they have. Um, other than your academic classes, you can choose 
one credit courses. I'm currently taking tennis and spinning class, which I enjoy very much. And last semester, I took health and lifestyle. And these classes are a nice way to make your academic life more fun while getting the extra credit. The reason I chose Ramapo is because of the scholarship opportunity that I received at Ramapo. Having a full scholarship really means uh, a point for me where I can continue and pursue a higher education at a university abroad between just not having a higher education. So that was really a huge deciding factor. When I was looking through the college brochure, I realized that, oh, Ramapo has uh, a club called Dumbledore's Army and being a huge Harry Potter fan that I am, I was sold from that point. It's just really about uh, getting that personalized experience that comes with a smaller school and I like uh, stepping into a class and knowing every one of your classmates and then uh, getting to have that um, experience with your professor as well, rather than just being in a big school and with hundreds of people in a lecture hall and you're just another number. I absolutely love Ramapo's housing options. The college uh, dorms are one of the best in New Jersey. I was really sold by the fact that Ramapo has a uh, private bathrooms for their residents, so it's it's a huge difference. I remember applying um, to different schools after taking the English language test uh, TOEFL and the SAT. Ramapo stood out because of its excellent combination of academics, student life, athletics, and support for international students. I was awarded a presidential scholarship. Without uh, it, I would not have been able to come and study. And as for my favorite things um, at Ramapo, they, they were many. I think I cherish probably the most my interactions with professors, um, my fellow students, um, of course, advisors from the Rukema Center and the career services. I still keep in touch with, with many. Please tell us how Ramapo's academic and student life experience has helped you gain a greater level of understanding and appreciation for different world cultures. When I enrolled at Ramapo, I also applied for the honors program. Uh, and being an honors student and a presidential scholar, uh, we were placed in Bischoff Hall every night. You know, like we used to gather around uh, in which to watch movies, talk to each other about, you know, culture from in from United States, as well as, you know, from our home countries. Uh, and that way, you know, we got to know each other. We did a lot of uh, trips through the Center for Student Involvement. We went to New York City, we went to Washington DC, we went to museums, uh, and these are all like school-sponsored trips. We used to do an international cuisine night every Friday, and I believe Sandy also cooked uh, some Burmese food and we made some Nepali food and all. And uh, everyone on campus was invited, you know, we discussed, you know, how those food were made and, you know, different cultural aspects. Uh, so it was very easy to get used to the new culture here because everyone was so friendly and uh, we all lived together in a way. Being a small school, uh, it was very easy to join clubs as well as open one. Uh, me with a couple of friends uh, were able to open a hackathon club pretty easily uh, and we were provided fundings uh, as well as you know opportunities to, to go to different cities and different universities and uh, uh, participate in those hackathons. I come from a country, from a small town and a smaller country that doesn't have much uh, diversity. So coming here, uh, I was not uh, very well versed into a lot of um, social issues that trouble the U.S. and the you know Western world. Um, you get to know people in your class on a personal level and you get to discuss issues and learn a lot like a great example for me would be um, trans issues i was completely unaware of uh, the impact that has on the world on people and um, how that has developed in the years because that's just not something that you discuss uh, in in you know my part of the world even in my first semester those first three months i've learned more about trans issues than in the 19 years uh, in my life beforehand. And that was just because of the professors that were open to discuss it with me, to explain things to me, as well as other students who had personal stories that, and they were not afraid to tell me. So that was like a great mixture of having this professional side from the faculty and the academic, ac academic aspect, as well as having, you know, these friendly kind of uh, colleague experiences from uh, other students that really meshed well and impacted 
how I adapted to the life here and the people I've met and stayed friends with. I love how universally applicable all of the classes are in Ramapo. Even though my major is marketing, my classes do not only focus on that. I also have lots of like genetic classes and study a lot of different things other than marketing. And I think this is the one of biggest benefit of studying in a liberal arts college in the United States. Lots of my friends back home that study in Europe, such as Italy, Spain, Switzerland, like we always compare our educational system to each other and they only study what their major is. And that's one of the biggest disadvantages, like the inability to change majors of the colleges back in Europe. So I'm thinking about changing my major right now. And even, even though I'm a sophomore, I can change majors without having to repeat these two years of studies in my college. So this is the biggest advantage that one has in liberal arts college academics in the United States that is not available in the European ones, which gives you a lot of freedom and gives you a lot of different choices. I would say in terms of academic experience, um, I took an anthropology class and I had to do a lot of field work by going into the city or going to different towns in New Jersey and really trying to understand the people and the cultures in each town. And that is really exciting for me because uh, coming from Burma, I had a very limited view of what America is like. And I had no idea that it would be as diverse as that I learned that it is to be. Being close to New York City also means that we have access to all the museums, the art community. And there's really no better way of learning about culture than taking uh, subway ride a couple blocks down and visiting a couple different museums and uh, trying out pretty much every food you see along the way is just culture right at the tip of your end. Speaking from a student life experience, uh, the one thing that really stood out for me from Ramapo since day one is how the college really celebrates uh, the culture within specific regions each year and how uh, the school devote a year for Latin America or the year for Asia and the Pacific region. And by having all these events and affairs and even the first year seminar reading material center around each specific culture, it really uh, drives us and pushes us to learn more about uh, about each culture from the region. To add on personally, I worked uh, in the uh, Rokuma Center for International Education for three years. And it's just amazing uh, to see how we all come together with one purpose to really explore other cultures and meet new people by coming here to US and by being exposed to more culture. Um, I became uh, somehow more appreciative of my own culture and I became more aware about who I am and more proud of where I'm from and my culture and my heritage. I do think that this is something that all international students discover that we take it for so granted back home that when we're just dropped into a different culture, is there's a new, newfound respect for where we come from. During my studies at Ramapo, I was really fortunate to have the opportunity to participate in three study abroad programs. Every spring, except my senior year, I was in a different country. My first year, um, second semester, I went to Bangalore in India, where I studied development, Indian life and culture. My second year, also second semester, I went to China, where I studied Chinese language and business administration at Shanghai Normal University. My third year, I went to Russia, to St. Petersburg, and there I focused on politics, diplomacy, and international relations. I was also the president of the Culture Club for some time. I participated in many organizations, uh, such as Model UN, and the International Student Organizations um, and others. I took different classes um, and had so many wonderful discussion and interactions with students and professors. And I think all of these had a huge impact on me and made me appreciate a lot different cultures and actually helped me a lot um, today in my current job. Have you encountered any challenges or culture shock as an international student living in the States? And how did you manage to overcome those experiences? So before coming to Ramapo, I actually attended a seminar about culture shocks that 
you know, I should expect. It was a lot of things, um, but when I came to Ramapo, uh, people were so friendly, all the staff, students, uh, and faculties, they were so friendly and eager to, you know, help you out that this culture sucks did not end up happening as much as I, uh, you know, uh, was ex- was expecting. Uh, the food was different, the weather was different, you know, uh, back in Nepal, it, it used to be 100 degrees for like nine months. But here it snows, you know, there's all sorts of weather. You know, after a little bit, you get used to it. And again, like, you know, everyone's ready to help. So even though you're confused or you're shocked, you know, just reach out to people and they'll help you. There are two culture shocks that occurred to me. The first one was the fact that um, you have to drive everywhere to get to any place. And I come from a small town and I walk to every important place and thing in my life for 19 years and then I came here and I had to take a car or an Uber or any other means of transportation to get to a store to get food. So that was surprising. It's something I'm still getting used to even after you know almost three years of living here. And the second one was much more positive and that was the fact that everybody would say hi to you even if they didn't know you. And that was completely unheard of from where I come from, because if you don't know somebody and, you know, you don't make eye contact with them, because why would you say hi to anybody? You just look at the ground and keep going. It was really surprising to see everybody so welcoming and and open to just converse with somebody who they didn't even know, which helped a lot with transitioning from that culture into this one. And even today, now uh, I'm that person that um, kind of starts up the greetings when I make eye contact with somebody I don't know. It's kind of nice, the fact that the culture shock that I remember the most actually helped me improve as a person in a positive sense and made an impact on me that's, you know, still lasting to this day. Um, Living in the U.S. cannot be compared to anything. I feel like it is a completely different world for me. And as much as it was really shocking moving here, I also really, really liked it. One of the biggest culture shocks that I also had, I have to agree with Luca, was that whenever I would pass someone on campus, even though I have never seen them in my life, they would just smile at me and just say hi to me. And as much as it was shocking, it was also like really really nice and the other thing that i had to overcome was blending in and making friends here which was pretty easy for me since i made some of great friends that are americans as well as internationals the first culture shock that i got was oh when i stepped into the classroom and here people address their professors by their first name and that really shocked me because from where i come from you really don't do that you call the professor a professor i like how you can challenge a professor in the classroom how you can ask questions and how that is the norm here because back home you're expected to conform and then listen to whatever you're told and never to question your professor So it's a completely different learning experience. And uh, to this day, honestly, I can never call a professor by their first name. I still call them professor. Even if they ask me like, oh, you can call me by my first name. And I'll be like, sure. In my head, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm calling you by your first name. (laughs) So it's just a lot of unlearning to do. One of the fears that I had was that would I not be able to adapt into this new culture Uh, Would I feel excluded because I don't belong here? Or will I be adapting too fast? And will I lose a part of my identity or my culture by adapting too fast? Where do I draw the line? So that's another one of the, I would say, not a shock, but more of a dilemma that you have to battle from time to time. Even after I graduated and started working, I I did notice that there were a lot of uh, cultural differences that came into play even when you work, because coming from a high context culture and then working in a low context culture, there's always some kind of... um, Uh, the differences between communication or the way you do your work, your work ethic. It's just true. Culture translates into a lot of different things and it's always a transitioning process. There's expectations that with new cultures come new challenges. And once you keep an open mind about it, I'm sure that you overcome a lot of your challenges much more easily. I think every person who first visits a foreign country has some kind of a culture shock. Uh, And perhaps that was particularly true in the past, in my case, close to 15 years ago, 
when I first landed in the US. I think my first impression was how huge everything was from the parking roads to the stores to the coffee sizes. Um, I remember asking my, my fellow American students why distance was measured in miles or temperature in Fahrenheit. Um, they would first look at me very strangely, but then we would have fun conversations about the size of the US and then I would share how it was in Europe. And these conversations really helped me learn about practical things um, in the US. And now it all feels very normal. Uh, back home, things look small, they don't taste the same, and um, coffee is definitely <laughs> too small for me. What are you currently working on, and what is your next plan? Should you decide to remain in the U.S. or return back home? So currently, I work at Ramapo as a programmer. Uh, I started as soon as I graduated in 2017. It's the same job that I had since my freshman year. So I was hired as a student aide uh, back in 2015. I liked working here so much that, uh, you know, with the help of my supervisor, uh, I was able to turn this student aid job to a full-time job. And it has been really nice. Uh, I get to meet Raz and Izumi all the time. I'm also enrolled in grad school right now at Georgia Tech. Uh, I'm doing my master's in computer science uh, and good thing is Ramapo does cover a, you know, part of my tuition right now, so that's very helpful. Uh, I like Ramapo so much that you know I I recommended my brother to enroll here, my cousins to enroll here. So pretty much, you know, like four or five of my family members are here at Ramapo studying. So it's a, it's a good, great school, great place to work, uh, and I've I've loved every single day of the last seven years. Uh, being a junior, I'm currently working on uh, my senior honors project, which will be like a performance piece slash writing about, you know, my experiences as an international that can hopefully be as universally um, viewed and uh, seen as possible. It's, you know, an international experience in a country that's really diverse and full of um, different types of immigrants. So hopefully it will be something that's, you know, enjoyable to watch as well as a good experience, learning experience for me. Also uh, looking into grad schools for writing and or performance currently because uh, I was planning on staying here and that would be a good transitional phase, especially since the world and the United States more specifically is transitioning back to normal in-person life that will hopefully be less socially distant by the time I graduate. Planning for graduation and how that transition will look is very stressful right now, but it also looks more positive than it did um, half a year ago because in my industry and profession, as there is this now new virtual world where hopefully it would be easier to collaborate on a more distant level before you would always have to be in the room have to be at that place to create this piece of work but now it was, we've seen that we can function very well when we're not in the same room and still be as creative and productive as before maybe that opens some new opportunities to collaborate and work with people who don't don't live in new york city or in the new jersey area and who are all across the country and we can create something together and you know hopefully open some new job slash experience opportunities in the future. Um, currently, I'm studying marketing in Ramapo, and I'm in the middle of figuring out changing my major and also adding a minor. Uh, to be honest, I'm not quite sure what I will do in the future yet. I had lots of plans before the COVID pandemic started. I was planning to take, take an exchange program in France since I've been studying French in Ramapo for three semesters now. I was supposed to take the exchange program this spring, but again, because of the COVID restrictions, I was not able to do it. However, I'm hoping I will be able to do it in the spring 2022 semester. And meanwhile, I will be working with professionals at Rampo to find out what opportunities I have. So for me, after I graduated in 2019 with my bachelor's in finance, um, I got my OPT and I worked for a year in a wealth management field. After that, um, just Earlier fall 2020, I decided to pursue my MBA program here at Ramapo, and uh, I'm currently finishing my uh, program with a data analytics track, and I'm expected to graduate this May. 
Uh, my initial plan was to go back to my country back home, but there is a uh, political turmoil happening back home and I was unable to go back home because of this military coup. So um, for now, I have decided to move out to Europe and I am considering um, exploring a career either in nonprofit management or consulting. At this point in life, I'm still trying to figure out things as it goes because there are so many unpredictable variables going to affect your life, so many challenges and curveballs that are going to be thrown at you. And meanwhile, apart from all of that, you're still trying to figure out a little bit of more of who you are and what you really want to do. So I'm taking it uh, day by day for now. Uh, I have been working at the World Bank Group uh, for the past eight years, and so since um, graduating from grad school from the Johns Hopkins University in Washington, D.C. So after Ramapo, I continued my education and pursued um, a master's in international relations and international economics. Currently based in D.C., a um, couple of years ago, I went on a two-year assignment in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And for now, um, um, I'm, I'm, right, I'm here in the States, but if um, as a person who loves traveling and um, knowing different cultures and countries, I will probably jump on the, on the next country assignment if, if such an opportunity comes along. How did the COVID-19 pandemic impact your life as a Ramapo student or as a working professional? So when pandemic started, I was working at Ramapo. I still work at Ramapo. Uh, you know, Ramapo realized that this condition was going to get worse. Uh, we shut down all the in-campus learning as well as, uh, you know, on in-campus work. Immediately, every, everything was moved to virtual. As somebody in art and especially performance art, it did feel for almost half a year like our whole industry just stagnated and stopped. Um, first off, when, when it all went down and the uh, lockdown happened, that was in the middle of a semester. So the transition there was a little confusing for everybody, including the faculty and the students and the staff, but I think it was handled as best as possible. But the interesting part about Ramapo's theater department is that we started doing uh, virtual productions and we had uh, virtual productions in the fall of 2020 and the uh, spring of 2021. And there's been this real good progression from going from this creative process where we all are usually in a room through rehearsals, through planning, through performances, whereas this big collaborative in-person process and transition actually as best as possible to a virtual one where we were not in the same room anymore, but we did still uh, continue to collaborate both creatively and professionally. And we managed to, you know, push through and put out products that we are proud of and that keep improving with uh, every production. It's actually been uh, quite enjoyable to, to work and be challenged in this new way. Uh, because of the pandemic, I took a semester online in fall 2020 and decided to stay back home in Georgia. It was pretty hard since the time difference between Georgia and the United States is nine hours, but all my professors were really very understanding about it and they accommodated me, helping me get through these hard times. This semester I am back on campus and I have five in-person classes, so everything is going pretty well and everything is almost back to normal, so I'm really happy about it. I was working and then, uh, um, and then the pandemic hit, but the field that I was working in was financial services, so there wasn't much of a um, I hit the job continue as normal, but everything changed overnight and transitioned to online. So there was a little bit of difficulty adjusting the first week. But apart from that, I would say the biggest challenge is probably concern for family and friends, especially for international students. I guess we feel that uh, if we're away from home, will we be ever be able to meet our family? You know, are they okay? Um, how do we even fly out to meet each other? So those are the little concerns that we have. I think COVID impacted everyone's lives um, everywhere in the world. I have been working from home for over a year now, and it hasn't been always very easy. But I have been grateful to have a job that allows me to work remotely. And I'm also grateful to to Zoom, WebEx, and all the technology out there that allows us to connect with family, colleagues, uh, and friends. 
What advice can you provide to our prospective international students? At Ramapo, uh, you experience everything. There's a good academic program. There's a lot of diverse population, uh, as well as different curricular activities that you could uh, you know, participate in. Also, there's you know New York City nearby, so it's very nice for job opportunities, as well as you know exploring a lot of different other areas like food, uh, different cultures. Ramapo has this this perfect mixer of everything from academics to fun to you know all other post graduation opportunities. The biggest piece of advice I could offer to any international students, no matter their major or their interests, is to just keep asking questions and not be afraid to ask questions. I discovered very very quickly here that because it's such a different culture and such a different system in all ways, asking questions is essential and because the people are so welcoming and open to conversations, um they will aid you in being the most productive student at the beginning of your career as you can and in the terms of you know progressing personally and professionally and it will make your life easier and make you feel less anxious because that just one of the problems you know you're going to have to face when you come here everything is stressful everything is new so just don't be afraid to ask questions and just explore every avenue and every interest you have and you know make your stay here worthwhile. I think Ramapo is a great choice for you if you want to be in a college with someone small community that is very interactive, has great academics and plus whenever you're free you can go to New York City. Setting here may be overwhelming since people and culture is so different but you will blend in easily since US is very very diverse and plus I think there is nothing else that Americans love more than a person with an accent so there is nothing you have to worry about the first is to really reach out to other students you can reach out to uh, people living in your dorm you can reach out to other international students especially and especially students who have gone through a couple years at Ramapo and it's really important that you build a supportive network with people who are going to be there to help you through it because times are going to get tough it's going to get challenging you're going to have a lot of questions and the one thing i'm really grateful walking away from all of this is that it's such a nice supportive community where every international students also kind of help each other it's so encouraging to be in this kind of space coming here we all have this uh a plan to work after we graduate, get our OPTs, H1B. So it's kind of a huge stressful factor uh, too while you're trying to study and figure that part out. If you feel very anxious about approaching this kind of work-related stuff or getting a work visa, I would say just pre-plan ahead things. It might uh, release some anxiety off you. Each day you're going to discover a little bit more about yourself as a person, what you're passionate about and what your what your strengths are. So I would say try to listen to those instincts. The most important experience is that you give it a shot. You take your chances, and while you can do it, travel a lot, have a lot of fun, because, uh, I mean, it's really amazing to be in the United States, and travel does open a lot of uh, new doors for you, too. I would say dare to try different things and challenge yourselves in all ways possible. This is the best time for you to learn, to meet new people, to experience new cultures, and have diverse experiences. Do not be afraid to leave your comfort zone. You'll be fine. You'll do okay. You'll do great. Ramapo has so much to offer and everyone is there to support you and help you have an amazing experience. So just be open and give them your hand. Great. Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your incredible international education journeys. Uh, We're so proud of you all uh, and all you have accomplished. And we hope to see you all soon again. Thank you, everyone. Thanks to our outstanding international students and alumni for today's conversation. And a special thanks to the entire staff of the Rockham Center for facilitating and participating in this series. Thanks for watching. Thank you.